Good afternoon to you. Mark Seth HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion, the first of two today, Sunday, the 6th of August, 2017. We have a lot to talk about today, mainly in association with Invest Area 90L, which now has almost, I mean, this is as close as you can get, I guess, a 90% chance of development over the next five days. And within five days, this will probably be inland over Mexico, 80% chance over the next 48 hours. And if we look at the visible animation here, I think you can understand why this is starting to come together here in the Western Caribbean Sea, as was suggested by the computer models and the overall conditions. They're generally hostile through here, but once you get to the Western Caribbean, uh, things tend to pile up in terms of the way the air converges and it's a much more favorable location for development. And here we go as this is knocking on the door of becoming a tropical depression or a tropical storm. If we look at the close-up animation here, uh, low pressure developing somewhere in this vicinity more than likely. And you've got the coast of the Yucatan over here. You have Belize, and then you have the coast of Honduras, and then Nicaragua. Uh, and then farther up here along the Yucatan are the resort areas. I wouldn't be too concerned up in this area, the northeast part of the Yucatan, but uh, Chetamal and then certainly down to Belize and even the coast of Honduras, some very heavy rainfall be, will be headed your way and the possibility of certainly gusty winds. Uh, you folks in Jamaica as well and even parts of southern Cuba, some of these heavier convective bursts will be rotating around this broad low pressure region. The good news is it'll cool you off. The bad news is, is you could get some heavy rain and some of that mountainous terrain that doesn't sit too well, but uh, this will pass over the next 24 hours, and then it'll probably just be really hot again after that. So I want to show you yesterday's vorticity signature. This is what it looked like with 90L, and, you know, it was kind of elongated and stretched out, and then this is what it looks like today. Definitely starting to come together. Uh, it still has a little bit of elongation north to south, but the vorticity or the spin is concentrating in the northern part there, and this is important because this is a sign that it is organizing. And just to mention 99L out here, I don't want to completely ignore it, but it's becoming less of an issue, it looks like. This is what it looked like yesterday. This is what it looks like today. Still not much better off at all, so I'm not going to worry about this too much. Um, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. Certainly, it's not just gone, uh, but it's not really a big concern of mine for the time being. Looking at the upper ocean heat content in the Caribbean Sea, as you approach the Yucatan here and where our disturbance is going to be moving through, very high upper ocean heat content, meaning that the water is warm not only at the surface, but also very deep into the Caribbean Sea. I say very deep, several hundred meters in some cases. So you have ample upper ocean heat content available for this system to develop. And as we get into the Gulf of Mexico, not quite as high uh, where this would potentially cross and maybe affect somewhere in this region, but still very, very warm water. In fact, if we look at the actual sea, uh, sea surface temperatures in the Gulf, I thought I had that in there. Let me go to my menu and see if we can pull that up. There it is. Good. Uh, I didn't want to miss this. Water temperatures approaching the Yucatan uh, about 29 degrees Celsius. But remember that water is also very deep. The warm water is. And so the upper ocean heat content through here is high. And then in the Bay of Campeche, and then, or Campeche, however you like to say it, towards the western Gulf, surface temperatures 29 to 30 degrees Celsius in the mid 80s. And if we go back to the heat content map, uh, pretty decent upper ocean heat content in the almost the middle of the scale, and so this would have plenty of heat available out of the Gulf to develop and possibly become the season's first hurricane. And I don't toss that around lightly. The modeling is suggesting it strongly. The environment, everything looks like this will uh, continue to intensify over time. Uh, I want to show you the track forecast here. Um, now that we have a more viable system to look at, uh, these are the various uh, computer models. 
And this just gives you an idea of the envelope here of the potential track over the next few days. And it looks like if you just sort of go down the middle, uh, a track near Tampico, Mexico, but we're talking anywhere from 72 to 96 hours out into time, and a lot can change obviously between now and then. So we can just say generally somewhere along the central western gulf side of Mexico here certainly needs to be watching this closely. As far as folks up in Texas, even as far south as Brownsville, more than likely just too much mid-level ridging to allow this to come north. And so too much of a good thing there will spell good news for you. However, depending on how large this system gets and how much room it takes up in the Gulf of Mexico, you could have a pretty good onshore flow uh, impacting portions of the lower Texas coast with an increase in wind and surf conditions and maybe, just maybe even some uh, scattered bands of showers and thunderstorms moving on shore. We'll get an idea about that more later as this develops and consolidates and we know how large a circulation center this has associated with it. Now the GFS, I want to show you this, this is the Western Atlantic Basin and here's the disturbance right here. Uh, there's the Yucatan and then western uh, portions of the Gulf where Mexico is and so let's put this into motion and this is I think over the next 96 hours and you notice it takes shape here finally developing a, a solid area of vorticity and it makes landfall in the Yucatan area not far from Chetamal uh, north of Belize City uh, this is the GFS by the way the global forecast system and then it really ramps up uh, down here in the southwest Gulf and it makes landfall to the south of Tampico. Tampico, Mexico is roughly right in here. All right, So it looks like it would make landfall according to this run and this is the morning run, the GFS uh, 12Z run and this makes landfall just south of Tampico. In fact it starts to lose latitude just a little bit right before landfall. It has sort of this dip to the southwest and if I speed this up you can really see that. Let's make it go faster and you see there it kind of curves down a little bit right towards the end and so that's interesting and by the way just for fun or whatever uh, there is 99L uh, amounting to nothing for the most part. Um, so why isn't this you know not likely to hit Texas or affect Texas directly? A uh, pretty good area of high pressure sitting out here over the western Atlantic and that extends enough so uh, over here to the west that it, it's just like a huge area of air, thick dome of high pressure that's just not going to allow this low pressure area through it so to speak. So it's keeping it forced down into the Caribbean and the western Gulf of Mexico over the next few days. So looking at the geographic areas that could be impacted um, so you have Chetamal right in here in the Bay of Chetamal and you know you've got this land mass out here the Quintana Roo however you say that or Roo you know I'm not as familiar with how to pronounce these areas as you could imagine uh, but I do want to point them out especially for people who do recognize areas you know Belize City is farther to the south so anywhere along this region over the next 24 to 48 hours definitely want to be monitoring the progress of this system as tropical storm conditions could spread through this area and then across the Yucatan, the southern part of the Yucatan and then into the southeast Bay of Campeche or Campeche uh, depending on how you say it right and then going from there moving across towards the western Gulf and more than likely a landfall somewhere in here but, you know, again, this can change. It could, it could be farther to the south. You never know. There's Tampico there. And um, we'll just have to wait and see. It's going to be an interesting and kind of a nerve-wracking few days ahead because it's got plenty of moisture to work with, plenty of warm water, and the upper environment looks favorable, and we may be talking about our first hurricane. So that being said, either tomorrow or certainly no later than Tuesday, but I'm thinking it's going to be tomorrow sometime probably starting in the afternoon I'm gonna do a live broadcast on YouTube using um, the Wirecast software that we use when we stream live from the road and we want to rebroadcast things and so this is gonna be sort of like 
Kind of like what the Weather Channel does, except I'm not in a you know ten million dollar studio or whatever it is. Um, but I'm going to sort of oh, how would you explain this? Kind of now cast it uh, and do my own broadcast continuously. I'm going to turn it on and I'll figure it out tomorrow. In tomorrow's updates, I will let you know. But it's just going to be live. And so I'll come in and I'll do an introduction and give you the latest. And then it's just going to be like satellite loops, radar loops, etc. that will cycle through. And then at each advisory package time, 11 a.m., 11, uh, 5 p.m., and 11, a, and 11 p.m., etc. Don't know if I'll be up for any 5 a.m. advisories. We'll see. Especially if it's a hurricane, I'll certainly make the effort. But the idea is to sort of now cast what's happening give you my insight, because I'll be watching it anyway, so why not do it live and involve you all? You'll be able to chat. We'll pull in radar images, like I said. We can talk about them, and then I'll come in at the advisory times, and we'll go over each advisory to make sure people understand what's happening. And with the power of social media and YouTube, we can reach a lot of people, potentially, in the Yucatan and then over along the Western Gulf you know, as much as I would like to go to Tampico or some place like that, it's not very practical, especially with all the equipment that I would like to bring. I don't want to just go with a video camera or just an iPhone and be there. I mean, I would, but that's not really my purpose. My purpose is a lot deeper than that. And if I can't bring my equipment with me, it's just expensive. The network over there to broadcast everything live may not be the same as what I'm used to in the United States. It can also be a lot more expensive, and so the whole thing just becomes prohibitively difficult to do, uh, unless it's in a resort area such as Cancun, as an example, or some place like Bermuda. I've done that before. Um, but the western Gulf of Mexico areas in Mexico, unless you're in a specific spot, and it goes right over a place like Tampico as an example, it becomes very difficult. So I want to do something, and I think this will be a good way to be involved. And so we'll do this uh, on the Yucatan landfall, and then later on as it approaches the coast of Mexico on the western Gulf side again. So probably 8 to 12 hours of live broadcasting with me popping in from time to time. Uh, you'll see me for what it's worth. You know, hi, I'll be saying hi to you in person. You'll see. I'm going to stop talking about it, and I'll just show you. It's going to be pretty cool. I think you'll appreciate it. All right, well, that's it from me for this afternoon. I'm going to do another broadcast here, another broadcast, a, a video discussion this evening, uh, and then tomorrow uh, a morning discussion, and then at some point I'm going to go live. All right? So have a great rest of your, after your afternoon on this Sunday afternoon. I'm Mark Suddeth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll be back with another video discussion for you tonight.